dedicated to nanotechnology and nanophysics. Nano is the smallest scale, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter, and both scientists and designers, but especially scientists, have found a way to work at that scale. Special microscopes that use a flow of electrons need to be used, and the flow of electrons touches the surface of the object. The nanoscale is where the dreams of scientists and the dreams of designers really come together. Scientists, because they take this flavor, they take this this passion for design and they understand how they can build the world atom by atom. Designers, because they think that by learning about nanophysics, they will be able to grow objects, to grow cities, to grow buildings in a way that is internally economical and internally elegant and therefore sound structurally. In the occasion of this exhibition, we commissioned four pieces of work. And this is one of my favorite ones. It's called Rules of Six, and it's by the two architects, Ben Aranda and Chris Lash, that are based in New York. Ben and Chris have been for a long time working on computational design. Computational design is design for architecture and, and furniture and objects that starts as mathematical algorithms and that's how the form and the structures are built. I asked them to work with the nanophysicist and in particular they worked with Matt Scullin from Berkeley and to take inspiration from nanoscopic particles. What they did is they took different particles that Matt gave them and they built algorithms based on the number six inspired by those structures. What they did then is they took one of these algorithms and they sent it to a milling machine in Brooklyn uh, at a company that's called in situ. And the computer manufactured in different portions this beautiful bas relief. It's very conceptual, it's very experimental, but taken as a whole, it could be at the same time a facade of a house or a map of a city. You know, it can really be any kind of structure with an indifference to scale that is one of the characteristics of design today. What you will find in the show is the work of many scientists. The scientists were at first surprised when they were asked to participate in the design show. But we truly built up to this moment. And about a year and a half ago, we started a collaboration with a science magazine called Seed and its founder, Adam Bly. And every month here at MoMA, we had a salon where we would throw together scientists and designers. And out of these collaborations came several of the objects in the show. This work over here did not come from the salon, but it came, the acquaintance with the author came from the salon. His name is Paul Rothermund. He's based in California, and he won a MacArthur grant because of his work on folding protein and on doing origami on DNA. He takes strands of DNA, uh, usually by a virus, because they're easier strands of DNA than the human DNA would be, and by using staple DNA, he convinces the DNA to fold in shapes that he decides beforehand. And you see, some of the shapes are truly familiar. You see here smileys and other uh, kind of beautiful shapes, snowflakes. They're meant to make contact with people. So the process is scientifically correct and it's very sophisticated, but the perception that we get is that of a smiley. And the smiley attracts us and then we get to understand better what the scientist wanted. So that's what puts together scientists, designers, and artists in this show. It's their desire to reach out to people no matter how complex and abstract their work is. The two panels that you see here are, on the one hand, the work of scientists, Thomas Mason and his team at UCLA. And on the other hand, the work of a typeface designer in Israel. Thomas Mason and his team developed this kind of alphabet soup of protein markers. You know, usually protein markers are just fluorescent dyes. In this case, he added, by working at the nanoscale, he added letters so as to make the marking even more precise. And next to him is the work of Odette Ezer, who instead envisioned a, a concept by which he can insert letters and typefaces into spermatozoa so that each ejaculation would be its own poem and just this beautiful lyrical expression. Why, the reason why I'm showing these two together and I'm talking about them, besides their interest as pieces of design, 
is because of the delight that the typeface designer and the scientists felt when they met at the opening of the show. It truly speaks about the future of our society, our creative society. The more we understand that we need to deal with fewer objects, not more, the more designers are positioning themselves as intellectuals, as concept makers, as um, people that can drive the evolution of society from a creative viewpoint instead of just making objects to fill the world. And this dialogue and this surprise and delight will become more and more frequent as we move in our future history.